Welcome back in the fifth episode of the Switch Mode Power Supply Repair series as done by the donkey himself. In the previous video we have finished off with the idea that the magnetic core inside the inductors plays a major role when it comes to the functionality of the switch mode power supplies in general. Namely, whenever you look at a switch mode power supply you're gonna find that they always use these quite expensive ferrite type materials as the magnetic core Similar to the inductors, also in the case of the chopper transformer as magnetic core, as you can see here, we are using the same type of expensive ferrite material. In contrast to the switch mode power supplies using ferrite cores, in the old school traditional linear power supplies, one use these old so-called humming transformers, which are working at about 50 to 60 hertz most of the time. The magnetic core, as you might be able to see on this picture, is no longer made out of a ferrite material but instead these are really laminated steel sheets and the steel is also mixed with a little bit of silicone as well. I will explain later why this silicone is in here. Since this laminated steel is at the end of the day nothing else but mostly iron, I mean that is what steel is, it's iron and some other impurities and in strong contrast to that this type of ferrite material contains really rare earth metals as an example cobalt or neodymium, ruthenium, rhodium and so forth and some of them can be really really pricey. And then the obvious question is now why are then we using these expensive materials in comparison to the old school cheap solution? The second question is why are we feeding such kind of chopper transformers or inductors in a switch mode power supply with pass width modulated high frequency pulses instead of just simply feeding in a type of sine wave as we do in the old school humming transformers? Let us now go back to the mechanical spring and perform another interesting experiment. To make the experiment easier for me, I'm gonna rotate now this spring and I'm gonna really put it between two pieces of metal. After we have the spring between this vise formed between the two pieces of metal, now then I'm gonna push down on it and when I release it you know what's gonna happen. It makes a characteristic noise and that noise is of course a sound wave which have a characteristic frequency. So in the case of the shorter spring we have this higher pitch noise as you can clearly hear. Now I'm gonna make the spring to stick out from this vise and let us now try what kind of noise does it make this time. So when I release it as you can hear, it makes a lot lower frequency noise that the frequency of this oscillation a lot lower compared to the shorter spring. And that is because depending on the length or on the size of the spring, we have different characteristic frequency of vibration. The pitch of this noise have clearly showed us that the longer the spring, the lower the frequency of the oscillation and the shorter the spring, the higher the frequency of this oscillation. I can hear your mind right now and you are asking, what on earth does have to do a mechanical spring making noises with switch mode power supplies or power supplies in general? Well, here is your explanation right away. On the left hand side, this is a switch mode power supply, at least a portion of it is in the video frame right now. And there is here this small chopper transformer, what you see. And this small chopper transformer is about 250 watt. So we are pumping through 250 watt of power through this small transformer. Now, in stark contrast to that, there is this material here. So this is practically the core material which is used for 50 to 60 hertz uh, transformers. And as you see, it is a huge stack. So this stack is made out of individual plates. 
this E-shaped material what I have showed you in the previous video and as you can imagine it is really really heavy and bulky as well. On top of this heavy stack of core material we even need to add about a half a pound or a good pound of copper to make a transformer out of it and what do you know? This core material is the core material roughly give or take of a 250 watt transformer at 50 Hz and I repeat this tiny chopper transformer here is the chopper transformer again for 250 watt. So you may ask how is possible that this tiny thing can do the same as this huge stack of core material here. At this stage is when our experiment with the spring and making noises comes into this picture, namely this huge bug thingy here, this large stuff gonna then obviously resonate at a low frequency and this is why such transformer core material and these large transformers they are used only up to 50 to 60 hertz most of the time. In comparison to the low spring you remember from the experiment the small short spring have been oscillating at a lot higher characteristic frequency and that is exactly what we are doing in the case of a switch mode power supply we are pumping in energy at a very very high frequency compared to the traditional 50 or 60 Hertz transformer core material so here we pump in energy at about 50,000 Hertz instead of just 50 Hertz like this one and this is how we can then pump through the same amount of watt or electronic energy at the end of the day through this tiny small transformer compared to this huge heavy bulky transformer in the right hand side. To make the following discussion a lot more clear I think it is a good idea to actually discuss what is the AC sine wave which is normally present at your connector when you plug in a device let us come back to this experiment and explain what is really happening. So at the beginning this spring here is not being deformed at all. So when it is at this position then we can consider it that it is at position 0. Now then I'm gonna press down on it. So I decrease the position of the spring as you can clearly see. And when I release it then it will swing through. It will come back again to the 0 position. Then then since there is still energy left it will actually go above the zero position then it will swing down again through the zero negative again go up to zero and high to positive again. If we would represent the actual oscillation of this mechanical spring as a function of time what we would see as I described to you is that at the beginning we start at zero then when I press it down of course the spring goes down as time goes forward when I release it then the spring bounces up it goes again through the zero it swings through it goes into a positive value and then this oscillation repeats over and over again. At the end of the day this is nothing else but a kind of sine wave and that is because this is a sinusoidal function and this is exactly the shape of the voltage what you get in your AC plug. We can clearly notice that after a while the same shape just repeats itself so behind this red line the same thing is just simply repeated and the whole thing is as uh, Whitney Houston will sing about is just shifted with one moment in time. This moment in time what is called a time period or the period of the sinusoidal oscillation in this case and this period is what we call a given frequency in Hertz. So as an example the AC frequency in Europe is oscillating 50 times. In the US it's doing this type of oscillation 60 times per second. You may of course thing that wait a minute there has to be some sort of catch I mean we cannot just make this transformer a lot smaller and we solve all the problems what we have compared to the heavy traditional transformer and of course as usual there is always a catch there is always a trade-off that let me remind you in the case of the power grid we have either 50 or 60 Hertz AC sine wave coming to us and when we have only 50 Hertz 
we cannot just pump it into a tiny transformer like this one, since this one we can feed only with 50,000 Hz. So it means that in the case of the switch mode power supply, first of all we need to generate this 50,000 Hz and feed it into the transformer and all the electronics what it is doing is actually preparing this kind of 50 or let's say several kilohertz of oscillation which we then feed into the transformer. In comparison to the small transformer, in the case of the big one, we know that the bigger, the lower the characteristic frequency of oscillation, so it means that we can directly feed in this 50 or 60 Hz sine wave directly in the primary of such a transformer. We don't need such a complicated circuit what we have in the case of the switch mode power supply. Another catch is then related to the core material itself as magnetic material, so this material here is made out of steel at the end of the day with a little bit of silicone in it which modifies the magnetic properties of the core and now in strong contrast because the steel is quite cheap in the case of the switch mode power supply the magnetic core have to be made from a special magnetic material as I will show you in the following experiments. Let us perform another experiment where we are looking at the magnetic material properties of different type of cores inside the inductor. This one here is this special type of material which is used normally for high frequency applications. When I come close with this material here to this ferromagnetic screw, nothing happens because this thing here what I'm holding between my fingers, this core, is not yet magnetized. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with this strong magnet this magnetic core gonna be then charged magnetically so it will become magnetized and when I remove now this magnet at that very moment the magnetic core gonna drop the screw so it gonna be instantaneously demagnetized. Now we're gonna repeat the same experiment however this time I'm gonna use a screwdriver which is made out of steel and as you know steel is used actually as a magnetic core inside the low frequency 50 to 60 Hz transformers and inductors and such. Again I'm gonna come in with the magnet just as previously the screwdriver have instantaneously grabbed the screw and that is because the steel material got magnetized through this strong magnet and now let us see what happens when I'm gonna pry off somehow this strong magnet from this thing. As you see the magnet is in my hand here, I'm not cheating and the screw is still attached to the steel material. Since the screwdriver which is made out of carbon reinforced steel haven't dropped the screw, it clearly means that this material is still keeping the magnetization inside this uh, carbon reinforced steel steel, lots of steels there right away. In strong contrast to this carbon reinforced steel screwdriver, as you remember when we were doing the experiment with this more special material which is forming the core inside the high frequency inductors used for switch mode power supplies, the screw was instantaneously dropped, so it means that this material was demagnetized almost instantly, whereas this one is keeping the magnetization for a long time so there has to be, there must be a strong difference between these two materials when it comes to magnetic properties. And we're gonna look in the following to these differences in the magnetic properties of the materials. So we're gonna talk about soft versus hard magnetic materials. In order to provide you a very basic understanding of these two different types of magnetic behavior, we're gonna look at a graphics where we are plotting the magnetic magnetization inside the magnetic core as a function of the actual strength of the external magnetic field. As we know from the previous video, if the magnetic core have yet not been magnetized and also we are not applying an external magnetic field, then at the beginning we have a zero magnetization. 
corresponding to a zero magnetic field. So that's where we are at the very beginning. Then now we are applying here, so we are along this axis, we are cranking up the external magnetic field. And of course, no wonder that also the magnetization is then being increased as we increase the field. Please keep in mind that after a given time, we're gonna reach the absolute maximum value of the magnetization inside the core. This is gonna become a completely flat line and that is because the magnetic core have been completely and fully magnetically saturated. This critical value of the magnetic field when we reach the saturation of the core is a material dependent property, namely if you take one type of steel alloy and you compare it to another type of steel, which is as an example having silicone in it, you're gonna see that this value of saturation is completely different in addition to this magnetic saturation which is represented here by this red curve for two different materials there is also another magnetic property which is highly important especially for switch mode power supplies and that is related to the area of this so-called magnetic hysteresis just because the figures look a bit complicated don't you worry about it namely the message of this figure is very simple so here we see that in both cases we started with a non-magnetized core and then we put both cores to full magnetic saturation. Okay, you have now this picture in your mind and now you should just simply remember the two different outcomes with the two different type of cores. So when we had this more special type of high frequency core, so here remember we were magnetically saturating the core with the external magnetic field, then I removed the magnet and automatically here this magnetization have dropped down and it completely collapsed. This field here, this so-called demagnetization field, is very very small in the case of these special type of high frequency materials and that is why they are called soft magnetic materials. In strong contrast to the special material, when we had simple steel, even when we remove the magnet the material still stayed magnetized and that is because here this demagnetization field is so large that the material cannot just spontaneously demagnetize so once we magnetize it there will be always some form of magnetization left and this is why these materials are called hard magnetic because they kind of remember the type of magnetization what you apply to it. We have to recall that even in the case of the low frequency, I have to emphasize that even in the low frequency regime, we have this sine wave. What would this do, this current, when it flows through an inductor? It would practically at the beginning, there would be no magnetic field. Then we would magnetize it one way. Then we would go back, demagnetize it. We would magnetize it in the other way. Then completely demagnetize it. And we would do this 50 times 2, which is 100, or in the case case of the US we would do this magnetization demagnetization 120 times per second. This means that in the case of a magnetic core practically we magnetize it then we demagnetize it 120 times per second. Again I have to repeat that we lose all the energy what we use to magnetize it and then we even need to put in extra energy to demagnetize it so that we can flip it in the other magnetic orientation so we come to this side of the curve and it is needless to say that the higher the frequency the more and more power we're gonna dissipate and this means that hard magnetic material simply cannot be used in the case of high frequency switch mode power supplies because the magnetic core would literally melt at those high frequencies and this is why these soft magnetic special cores have been developed in electronics exactly for this kind of high frequency applications and I have to tell you that the higher the frequency, the more special type of material and more expensive material we need to use. When you go through different boards, you're gonna see that there are multiple colors of this core material. The real material itself is mostly colored black like this one. However, companies apply a sort of enamel coating on this black material and this is how they're gonna get then these different colors. Although 
Although the color of this enamel coating on the core material is not standardized, what I found is most of the time the manufacturers will try to use the color as a sort of way to show you what is the material being intended for. So as an example, the black ones are most of the time the ones which are for relative low frequency applications and this is because these are the so-called generic cores and this is why they are not colored. Then the green and the red ones, they are tend to be used for switch mode power supplies up to about let's say 500 kilohertz or so. The yellow ones and especially the gray ones, they are used also in switch mode power supplies but above a megahertz up to about 5 megahertz or so or also for radio frequency applications and the purple one and especially the blue and the purple those are the ones which are used for really high frequency applications. Since all these high frequency cores tend to be quite expensive and they are really not easy to come by as a private person I can tell you it's worth it to desolder them from old boards because whenever you build your own power supplies you're gonna actually reuse these and you're gonna make than your own coil. In this episode we have went through the magnetic core material and also we have understood why do we need to apply a high frequency pass width modulated signal to feed the actual core at high frequency and that is because this way we can use a small core. Crystal clearly the smaller the size of the inductor or of the transformer itself the smaller and more lightweight the whole switch mode power supply will be. Also we need to keep in mind that now the smaller is the actual inductor, the higher this frequency must be. And this is a very important design consideration. At this stage now we have mainly finished with the inductor, so in the next episode we gonna look at more practical concepts, namely we gonna discuss the path width modulation itself. For the time being we are pretty much done with mostly this theoretical part which we had to go through and now we get really into the practical material and building some small electronic circuits. Many thanks for watching.